Test. Good. We're good, Jeff? Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, for the Jose Ramirez Victor Postal Post by Press Conference. Uh, before we get Jose in here, we have the winner of our co feature bout. Arnold Barbosa Jr., who decisioned Tony Lewis by 10 rounds, unanimous decision. We'd like to ask, a, ask, a, ask if you would like to ask a question, uh, please press the, uh, request the unmute button or raise your hand in the chat. Thank you very much. First off, uh, Jake Donovan, boxing scene, take it away. Thanks, Evan. Uh, Arnold, congratulations on the win. Um, repeatedly throughout the fight, your dad kept telling you, go out there, have fun. Um, how much of that was encouragement? How much of that was him just trying to make sure you re you remained uh, focused on the task at hand? Um, you know what, to be honest, my, my dad always tells me that even in sparring, you know, he, he says I do better when I have fun. And, you know, I had fun in there. Uh, you know, uh, I'm glad I got the rounds in. You know, I haven't went 10 rounds in quite a while. So, so it was, it was, and it was a tough, tough, tough guy, man. You know, he kept coming forward. He ate a lot of shots. I feel like he did, and uh, it was a, it was a great performance. I feel like, uh, I mean, I could do way better in my eyes, but other people were telling me it was a good performance. So, so it was a good performance, I guess. Okay, got it. Um, a, a lot was made of your potential next fight. They reported on air that you could be fighting um, Alex Acedo next. Um, was any of that on your mind going in, or was this something that you just? Uh, blocked out until the end of the fight? Uh, it was something I blacked out, uh, I blocked out to, the, to the end of the fight. You know, I never take anybody, you know, lightly, you know, at all. So, so that was something that I didn't even worry about, you know, until after I made sure I was victorious, you know. But, hey, if, if you know, I know he's been wanting it, and, you know, and, and I wanted it. It makes sense for both of us. I feel like I need him, and he needs me. So we can make it happen. Okay, and I just got one more. Um, he told Kriegel that he said he's going to knock you out in six rounds before the fight. After the fight, now he says he's going to knock you out in three rounds. Is that Sa Salcedo said that? Yes, sir. Oh, well, that's, that's cool, man. He, I mean, yeah, I, I don't do no talking or anything like that. So if he wants to think that, then that's fine. He can he can dream that, think that, but not, it won't happen. All right, very cool. Thank you. Congratulations once again. Alan. Thank you. You got it. Okay, next, uh, whoever wants to ask a question, again, please raise your hand uh, in the uh, raise hand button, or uh, you can just send it through the chat, and I will I will get, get your hand. So whoever wants to ask a question, please do that. <laughs> okay, next up we got Reggie Woodson. Uh, please press the unmute button and uh, go ahead. Hey, congratulations on the win, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, the division is is loaded. Um, you know, you dominated the fight. Any thoughts late, um, you know, on maybe needing to make a, a, a statement with the stoppage? Yeah, you know, funny thing is that, like, I, I kept asking the round. I couldn't see what round it was, you know, because the, the, my plan was, like, I wanted to box in, like, the first six, seven rounds and then just close up and try to finish them in the late rounds, you know, because I felt like I could get, I was going to get them out of there. And then, I heard, you know, the tenth round. I was like, I was like, oh, I was told it was like the sixth or seventh, you know. So I was like, so if you know, I don't know if you've seen it, but the last round, I was already gonna get him out. If I would have had one more round, he would have been out of there, you know. So I was kind of like bummed out about it, but, but hey, man, you know, you, I got the rounds in, no complaints. Did the uh, induction and that break in the action? It seemed like you were really aggressive that round, and that kind of stopped your momentum. Uh, did that kind of? Start things out for you for the next couple rounds. Or? It, I mean, kind of not really. I just start. It just it, it sucks when something like that happens, you know, because it's not intentional. I'm not a dirty fighter or anything like that, you know. To, to get a point when you, when I like to go to the body a lot, it kind of like makes you think a little bit. You know, the referee was 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 kind of like you know getting on me about it, but but now, nah, man, you know, I, I I just had to just go back to the game plan, use the jab again, and um, keep pressing forward. Last question, just how would you rate your performance? Uh, did you, you think you got to display everything to uh, show where you are uh, amongst your peers in the division or? No, not at all. I think, I think you know, I could have I could have did a, I had a better performance. Um, but, you know, like, like I needed the rounds, you know, and, and I, had, I haven't fought it since November 30th. So, so I feel like, you know, a uh, little rust is out. And now let's, let's get back to work in the gym. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Okay, uh, whoever wants to ask a question for Arnold before he departs, please use, again, ra the raise hand button or 
just uh, hit me up in the chat uh, below. Hey, Sam Gordon, Las Vegas Review Journal, you're up. Sam, you there? I guess I guess the Sam is snoozing. So if, I, if nobody else, uh, what going once, going twice. If anybody else has a question for Arnold Barbosa Jr., uh, again, we uh, yeah, we got Jeremy Harridge's uh, from Fansided. Let me just unmute you there shortly, Jeremy, and we will uh, get. Yep, Jeremy, you're up. Go ahead. Hey Arnold, congratulations on the excellent victory tonight. Um, I, I'm just curious from from your standpoint when assessing yourself. Um, considering what you came into this fight planning, how were you able to bring out your fight plan? What did you like about performance? And was there anything that you felt like you needed to improve on? Um, you know, uh, I think, you know, my, my performance, you know, what I did do is I, I you know, I used, I utilized a jab. I didn't let him really get in the inside too much. Um, Cause the only time he came in the inside is when I wanted him to, you know, and um, I just felt like I could have closed the show. I could have took him out, you know, but that, that's the thing that just that kind of disappointed me. But you're not gonna knock everyone out, you know. He, he was a tough dude, man. I hit him with some good shots, and he didn't go down. So um, it's all right, you know. We got the rounds in. Uh, we'll look for the next one. As far as what you learn about yourself in this fight, every fight obviously gives you some sense of experience. Uh, what are your big takeaways from this fight? Uh, you know, my big takeaways, you know, it's uh, you know that that you know I'm not gonna be able to knock everybody out. You know, um, I was on a knockout streak, and you know, and and my power. I feel like my power is good. Um, and you know, and, and I feel like I can, and there's things that I'm gonna go. I, I gotta look at the tape first, you know, and then I gotta go back to gym. Of course, I'm gonna work on a lot of things, but you know, I, I, I you know, been practicing lefty a little, and I, I showed a little bit of it. So now I'm gonna go to the gym now that I know I can do it in a fight and go to the gym and work on it, perfect it a little more. Well, excellent win tonight, and thank you so much for, for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. And uh, if anybody else has a question for Arnold, we got a couple more minutes with him, so please. Uh, raise your hand. Um, if not, we will let him enjoy the night. So, uh, anybody has a question for Arnold? Again, please uh, ask to be unmuted or uh, hit me up in the chat below. All right. On that note, uh, that'll be all for Arnold Barbosa Jr. tonight. We will have Jose Ramirez here in, in a few minutes. So, please stand by. Congratulations, Arnold, and thank you for joining us. Today. Thank you, guys.
is his manager, advisor, jack of all trades, um, Rick Rigby, and we can discuss uh, his performance and where he goes from there. Uh, Rick, you want to, we, got some, we got some press here on the line. We'd like to see, you can take mask off if you'd like. Uh, I'd like to say a few words about Jose's performance and what's next for him. Go ahead. You know, it's, uh, it's done and over. That was the biggest uh, thing here. You know, three and a half camps for one fight, and uh, we got the job done. I think he decisively won. I think he won seven of those rounds. And uh, bring on Josh Taylor. That's the order for, from Ramirez to me. Go get the Taylor fight done. Uh, anybody wants to ask a question for Rick while we wait for Jose? Again, uh, I'm going to say it again, the raise hand uh, button or just uh, slide in the chat below to, to ask a question and we will uh, we'll go ahead. Fresno Beaver, bro. Yeah, well, a Anthony Galvis, where are you at? Okay. Hey, Reggie Woodson, uh, you are on, sir. Go, go ahead. Hey, congratulations there, uh, Rick. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, yeah I can hear you. Thank you. Crystal clear. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, I was checking you out on Instagram, man. You were very excited about what you were able to accomplish, uh, you know, in the two events that you set up that were canceled or postponed and whatnot. Uh, kind of how do you approach putting together the, uh, you know, potentially the undisputed fight. What will you be looking for? In a normal circumstance, you know, we'd have a crowd and, and there'd be a lot of different things I could bring to the table for top rank to evaluate and look at. But based on, you know, the current situation we're all in, uh, I think Aram has, you know, said it best with uh, the fight will probably take place in a non-crowd environment. So uh, I'll be limited with, you know, what, what we can do as far as staging an event or anything. So I look for this event, event probably go to go to the highest bidder, end up in London somewhere or, you know, possibly even Vegas. But uh, I, I don't anticipate a crowd or, you know, us being able to do that yet. If there was, I think I'd fill our uh, Fresno State football stadium. This would be the first time I'd go there. And I think we'd get, you know, 20, 25,000 people. In fact, I know I could, um, but we're just not in those times right now. How do you feel about this, you know, everything that you guys have been able to accomplish and what you've worked to and now to get here to this type of uh, moment and, you know, not be able to rely on, uh, you know, the home field advantage, so to speak? As Ramirez has shown, he's went on the uh, road and won each of his world titles and expect the same thing to happen again. It doesn't make a difference if he's at home or, or if he's away. So uh, there's, there's no advantage there. Uh, by fighting at home. You know, that's been done a few times because he just loves the, you know, people who are that, that live in the Central Valley and knows the supports there. So, you know, we often would, would do that for him. But uh, Ramirez will get on a plane and go to Scotland or, or London and let Josh Taylor have it. You trust me. Last question. Just, uh, you know, what was your uh, and what you saw take place in a fighter that you're uh, very familiar with? Uh, uh, please uh, repeat, the, repeat the first part of that question. You cut off. Sorry, right. I just said, um, I forgot what I said, honestly. Um, you're very familiar with your fighter, and uh, just what, how would you grade tonight's performance, and, you know, what were some of the, uh, the issues that you think kind of stalled things out just a little bit? I don't think there was any issues. I think any top-tier fighter, a Crawford or a Taylor, would have, would have had a similar fight. I mean, this guy was off three or four camps. Uh, you saw on the seventh. Uh, that, he, that he almost put him away or he, he was in danger, you know, Postal was. So, uh, you know, all things factored in. Ramirez went out there and took care of work in a tough environment. You know, I don't think, and I'm willing to go on the record and say, can you tell me another fighter that has had four camps for the same fight? I mean, that's got, that's got some mental, you know, uh, uh, wearability on you, you know? So uh, I think he handled it like a champion. I don't think most guys could go through that many camps and stay positive dealing with, their coach getting COVID, he may not be there, he may not be there, but this is an all-star performance, in my opinion, based on uh, just the environment and, and what's gone on. Thank you very much, Reggie. Now we turn over to Gail. Gail, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, after the fight uh, in the ESPN post-fight interview, Jose mentioned that he, he really felt the lack of fans and all things considered, he would like to put the fight 
against Taylor in front of fans. Will that play into the decision where to cite the fight? Considering six, eight months from now, that might be a possibility. The one thing I've learned during the past year is that nobody has a decision in this. Meaning, <laughs> uh, uh, when a crowd comes back, there's going to be a very big political movement, and, and we'll see a lot of other things happen before a boxing crowd uh, is back again. So I don't think we're, you know, we're in a position to you know, make, make that choice. Uh, uh, of course, I, uh, Jose wants it. I want it. I think every fighter out there wants to be in a crowd situation, but you know, I think Top Rank has jumped out there and been a leader by just giving us a platform and fighters just to have a major fight like this. Uh, in the COVID era, I would say this is the biggest fight that's taken place without question. Um, so uh, for, for, for many reasons, tonight was a special night. This was a big fight, the biggest, and uh, we may not have the crowd, but, but we'll still have the action and stuff in there. So I think, uh, I think for me, I just want to see uh, testing get better so a fighter doesn't have to go through four camps, uh, tests become more reliable. Those are the things I think that might give us a little bit of a boost and, and some positive energy going into the next fight. But the crowds are going to happen when they happen. Well, well, uh, well now, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, Gail, but you can, you'll be able to ask the first question for Jose Ramirez because he just walked in. Rick, thank you, Rick, thank you very much. And uh, we close out the proceedings tonight with the still WBC, WBO, junior welterweight uh, champion of the world, Mr. Jose Ramirez, pride of the Central Valley. Jose, uh, go ahead, Gail. Uh, your, your lead off. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Jose. Congratulations. Your first question coming from Southern California here in San Diego. I just asked about your comment at the end of the fight about the lack of the fans and how that affected you and your druthers to have a fight with Taylor in front of fans. But it did seem to me that Robert stepped in numerous times in the corner during the fight to provide the motivation where the fans were lacking. Would you agree? Did you feel that he provided what you needed when the fans weren't there to do it? Yeah, of course. You know, Robert, uh, see, Robert knows what I could do, you know, so he uh, he was trying to keep me motivated and hungry, and he understands it's been such a long year of me training, so he knew I went through a lot of training camps, a lot of sacrifice, uh, putting my body through so much uh, work that he probably knew that I was a little tired, you know, mentally from just being the whole year inside the gym. So he just wanted me to, you know, to finish strong. And, and I was, you know, he knew I was okay. Uh, he knew I was uh, comfortable in there. He just wanted me to, to be more myself, you know, and let my punches go. Do you think there are any lessons for you in this? I mean, hopefully you'll never be put in this situation again. But what what can you draw from the negatives about these long drawn out issues that testing problems you know everything that's gone on you do know, you kind of say i'm putting that off in the box locking that away and calling it done yeah you know um it's part of learning and uh it's, it's you know i it's, it was something new for me so it was good for me to go through this, this type of uh, adversity you could say you know uh again it, it wasn't so much of of the three days of, or four days being in the bubble, it was more like, you know, just, I went through so much since uh, November of 2019 to get ready for the same fight. So, um, obviously, we put in so many rounds of sparring and stuff like that. So it's, it's very important that I measure my body correctly to make sure I don't overwork. And uh, I think that was one thing that I was able to to understand better, to see how my body reacts, you know, when, when if, I, if I stay in the gym and put so much work. And, I, and that's something that Robert Garcia also, with Chip and Charles, uh, are, were able to see as well, you know. So it's, it's good for us to go through this experience. And uh, I, I was just grateful, and it's a blessing, you know. It's a blessing that I'm now in a position where uh, I'm just waiting for Josh Taylor to see, hopefully, he, you know, he uh, defends his titles, and then we can make the fight happen. Thank you very much, Gail. Sorry. Oh, sorry to cut you off, Gail. Oh, I apologize. Uh, we got we got Jeremy uh, Harris on the line. Yeah, uh, Jeremy, go ahead. Hey, Jose. Congratulations on retaining your titles and the victory. Um, as far as your expectations, um, did Victor did Victor Postal surprise you with anything that he did tonight? And um, what did you think about his performance? Uh, no, I. You know, I think he could. You know, he could take a punch, but. Uh, 
No, there was nothing new. Uh, you know, I I think if I would have put a little bit more pressure and just let my punches go in. If I would have felt a little bit more fresh, you know, my body just not as tense, I think I, w- I would have done much better. But, hey, it's a, it was a great fight. You know, it's a good fight, and uh, I'm glad we both came out healthy. And But I could see it was respecting my power. I was just, you know, my, my mistake was that I was waiting for that one shot, and and instead of letting my com- combinations go. And I think that was a, the, my, my biggest mistake. But uh, Post was a great man. You know, he's a very disciplined fighter. Uh, everybody in the world in boxing knows that. He's a very disciplined fighter. Even when he's when he's not training for a fight, he's always, you know, staying physically active uh, in his country, and and he he, uh, he takes care of his body pretty well for his age. So, you know, I uh, I would I would have loved to to make a bigger statement, but hey, you know, it's it's part of it's part of boxing. Looking over the the history of your your career so far. Um, Obviously, keeping everything in mind with all of your experiences, would this fight stack up as one of your hardest uh, to date, in, in your opinion? No, I think probably uh, I had a other preview of fights that I, you know, that I felt like, you know, I was more concerned. And this fight was just, you know, I knew he didn't have the power or much to hurt me. It was just my problem was that I, I needed to let my punches go. You know, I was I was a little too patient. I was a little too hesitant. Um, and so I made the fight a little bit more difficult for myself. Going forward, if, if you have to fight in this this environment again, um, anything that you would do differently the second time around, and, and obviously, you know, hoping that you don't have to do, you know, multiple training camps for, for one fight. Yeah, I think the most important is, is just, you know, is getting a good break, letting my body recover, getting, letting my body get fresh again, you know, and then going back to training, with that motivation and drive that I, you know, I want to work hard for a good fight, you know, and even if it goes through, even if I have to go through this experience one more time, I think my body's going to react a lot better. I just need to let my body recover. I think that's the most important thing. Awesome. Thank you, Jose, and, and congratulations on the win. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, again, raise hand uh, mechanism or send in the chat. Um, Jose's tired, so we'll only do a couple more questions for Jose, and then we'll let him uh, relax and enjoy the evening. Uh, Reggie, go ahead, sir. Hey, congrats on the uh, victory there, uh, Jose. Hmm. And, and you get that moment, I don't know, what it was earlier in, in the first half of the fight, you do get the left hand through and he stumbles for a minute. Uh, you know, what was your thought process at that moment? You know, I think the... <laughs> I think the... Uh, I knew I was able to hurt him. You know, I knew I was able to hurt him, but... I think my what I lacked the most in this fight was just the, the the killer instinct, you know, the killer instinct that I'm usually that I usually show in other fights. And if I were to use that killer instinct in this fight, I think I would have put him away, you know. But my hats off to to Victor Posto because he's a you know, he's a he's a true champion. He's a true gentleman. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it just it's, it's part of uh, it's part of learning. You know, it's part of learning and, and going through. Uh, this type of fights too, you know, it was, it was good that I got the, I got the 12 rounds uh, in, you know, because it, it, it reminds me of what I had to go through for 12 rounds in a 12 round fight, you know, and uh, and uh, I'm just ready to, to rest, relax, and then, you know, hopefully get ready for Josh Taylor. Tons of experience in your corner and, and, and Robert Garcia with all of his, you know, all of the guys that he's training, the world champions that he interacts with and whatnot. Was any thought given uh, earlier in the process about all of the time spent in camp? Were, were any breaks worked into it or off days? Or Yeah, you know, we, the first two camps, man, I was extremely sharp, you know, but the third camp, you know, obviously I was already a little, my body was a little tired, so Robert was will give me a day, you know, a couple of days off, and, and he wanted me to come back. And there were so many things happening in my personal life, too, that I, you know, I, want, I wanted to just kind of, go through the motion with this fight and get back to my, my, my personal life, you know, that I, sometimes when you're, in the, when you're stuck in the sport too much, you know, you start missing your, your personal life a little bit, you know, your, your family and, and, and your, just being a, a brother, a father, you know, a son. And uh, Robert, did, Robert and my team, you know, my corner, they did a good job to just remind me, hey, Jose, you're, you're already there, you know, you could, you know, you just 
keep being you, push them, you know, don't respect them, don't give them anything. And, and uh, you know, and then I tried, and obviously I tried. I was making them, I thought I was making, I was blocking most of the punches um, that he was throwing, a lot of his, um, touching punches I was blocking, and I started using my solid jab. And then for, for some time, I would think that I was in a sparring section, so I was just, you know, too real, over relaxed. And instead of, you know, like I said, I, I was just missing that, that killer instinct, you know, that I, that I usually show. Thank you very much, Reggie. And uh, sorry, again, I cut you off. I'm having a habit on this one tonight, cutting people off. You can, uh, ask, you can ask one more question. I know he has a good question. No, no, um, hey, oh, you know what? One go ahead, more, Reggie, well, Reggie, one more question. Let's go. <laughs> well, I was going to say, uh, I don't know if you watch basketball at all, or, or, at all but um, okay. the guy from the Clippers, um, Paul George just mentioned the effects of being away from his family and whatnot. Um, going into the, you know, potentially going into that undisputed fight, you know, for you, is it imperative that that's in front of, uh, in, in the normal circumstances with fans in attendance and, and, and so on and so forth? <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go through this experience with fans or no, with fans or no fans. I just, I just gotta let my body recover a little bit, you know? Same thing, uh, you know, when I when I fought Jose Zepeda, you know, it wasn't my best performance, but then I went on to, uh, you know, to to fight Hooker, and I went straight to unify those titles, and and uh, you know, and I showed you know something new, and in, in, in the in the game fight facing a, a tough Murray Hooker. Same thing with this fight, you know, I'm I'm happy I got the 12 rounds in, and and I know I know I'm going to be much much, you could say a fresher. And, and, and with that killer instinct and much stronger fighter if, when I do face Josh Taylor. So every, every athlete is different. Some athletes, you know, they, they miss their family more than others. Some, some need that support, some don't. You know, I'm a, I'm a big time family man. So yeah, I, I think, you know, I can understand why Paul, you know, Paul George would say something like that. Congratulations. Thank you, brother. Thank Appreciate you, Reggie. Uh, with the last line of questions here, it's only fitting that we go to Anthony Galvez from uh, Fresno Beach. Anthony, go ahead. Hey, Jose, congratulations on your win tonight. Um, going, back, going back to what Robert Garcia was telling you there before the seventh round, um, you know, he saw some stuff in there that might you, you might have, like, got to pick up things here in the seventh round. You did pick up things in the seventh round uh, when you rattled uh, Victor there. I, I, I was watching you, and I noticed there was a, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a little bit of hesitation there because it seemed like you were waiting for the fans to come in and start cheering for you because usually you pounce on your opponent when that happens. How much, I mean, you talked about it before. Can you just recap what you saw there in the seventh round and not having the fans there, how much did that really affect you? You know, Anthony, it's hard to, it's hard to say. I think it was more like my... Uh... You know, I think for a second I got just too comfortable, you know? Treating, treating it in like a sparring section, treating the fight like a sparring section when I, uh, when I could have showed that killer instinct uh, that I usually show, you know? And I think it's part of experience, you know? And there's no excuses, it's, it's part of the game and I'm just gonna learn from this, you know? And it's my first time fighting under this circumstances. Uh, but again, it's, it's just, it was such a long year. To, I mean, we, I sacrificed my, my, you know, myself through training through the holidays, I got engaged. You know, I was missing my, my fiance, my family, my son. Uh, I'm expecting my second my second baby now too. I found out three weeks ago. So there was, you know, there was so many things that I wanted to just hurry up and get this fight over with, you know, that I was a little distracted, you know, and a little burned out, you could say, from just from being stuck in the sport for almost a whole year, you know, without any uh, re reward, you could say. and. Uh, I think I got too comfortable in there, you know, and I could have, I could have just been myself, and I think I could have done a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, in sports, they talk about trap games, and you know, obviously, you want to become undefeated world champion in the 140 division. Uh, did you kind of look at, like, did you kind of look ahead towards, you know, maybe possibly facing Josh Taylor? Uh, and this is a two-part question, so answer that. The second question is. You want to become the first Hispanic champion in, you know, the whole four bouts. How important is that for you to, to establish, you know, hey, I'm the first, I did it. Can you talk about that? <clears throat> yeah, you know, I, of course I was looking uh, at the importance, and that, that's what kept me motivated. You know, I, I'm one fight away from, you know, from, from fighting uh, possibly for an undisputed, you know, hopefully Josh Taylor uh, defends his titles against his uh, mandatory. Um, next month, 
but yeah, of course, I was, I was, I was thinking a little ahead, and that's what kept me a little, a little bit motivated. Uh, I know how important this fight was, though. I know that it was going to be a little complicated because Posto is, is a very long, um, crafty, tricky fighter, you know. So it was, I know he was going to make it a little, a little bit more complicated. Um, but as far as be, you know, wanting to become a Hispanic, of course, you know that's a that's a huge goal. You know that's uh, that's something that's a motivation. You know that for me to not just to become the first Hispanic, you know, not to brag about that or or or, or to have stories, you know, uh, written about me becoming the first one. It's not about that. It's just I want to I want to see. I just want to prove to myself if I'm the best 140, and by doing that, I have to face the best 140 pounders out there and. As we know, Josh Taylor has the other two bouts, and in order for me to say I'm, I was the best 140 before I make my move to 147, I have to face Josh Taylor. So I do that more for my own glory, for myself, you know, and not not, not so much for for the writers, for the people's opinions, you know. I I, I do that for myself, and that's that's what I want to do. Last question for you, Jose, before I let you go. Uh, how would you rate your performance tonight? <laughs> like a seven. <laughs> A seven, because I got the victory. A six, my dad, I would have I would have been in trouble. <laughs> right. Like a B. Hey, Anthony, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We'll get Jose back uh, so we can relax. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.